Hi, in this video we're going to look how you can generate from a displacement time graph for a simple harmonic motion its velocity and its acceleration. So we'll start down by just making ourselves aware or reminding ourselves of the various terms. So displacement x, remember, that's a vector. Time, probably going to be t. Yep, look, there it is. Velocity, as I'm sure you will remember, it's distance over time. Or perhaps more accurately, we should say change in distance over the time taken for that change to happen. So we can say that velocity is equal to delta x over delta t. Now, in a similar fashion, acceleration is the change of velocity, or delta v, over the time taken for that change to happen, delta t. So we have two what you might call delta equations here. And both of these are effectively gradients. So the gradient of the displacement curve gives us the velocity. So here's a displacement time graph that I've generated in Excel. It's worth having a go at that. What we're going to do is look at the various kind of key points, maximums and minimums of various um, quantities. And you can see that our red dots are appearing at the peaks and the troughs of this so a cosine wave as it is. Now what we're going to do is remember that velocity is delta x over delta t, i.e. the gradient of the graph. And at these red dots you would create a gradient by drawing a tangent. So I'll just quickly show you how we do that. So here we go. Here's a gradient for this point and I'm just going to move it down so it sits nicely on top of the curve. And you can see that at that point, the tangent to the curve is totally horizontal, meaning that it has no gradient. Or I should say its gradient is zero. We'll then go and repeat it for these other key points. Position them all. And so what we have now is four points on the wave that I've drawn, effectively the peaks and the troughs, where the gradient is zero. So I can go ahead and mark in some zero points in red there, you can see them coming. And so these are the points on the curve where the velocity is going to be zero. So now we're going to look at the points where the gradient of the line is at its steepest, going down or going up. And I'm just adding the going down one here. And you can see that the gradient of the curve is at its steepest point as it crosses over the zero point on the y-axis. Hence, we have a steep downwards arrow. That's our most negative gradient, it's the steepest going down. By a similar argument, the steepest going up occurs again where it crosses the zero displacement point, but in the opposite direction. So this time, because it's a vector, the arrow is going up. So we have now maximum positives going up, maximum negatives where it's going down. So we'll just finish adding those in. And just like we added the zero points, we can now go ahead and add our various maximums or minimums. And when I say minimum, minimum I mean most negative. So there we go, I'm labelling it biggest gradient, I bet, negative, yes, because it's going downhill, biggest negative gradient. It's that one, this one, biggest positive, I bet gradient. Yes. Right, so I dot down from the point where it crosses over the zero on the y-axis and I put in an, a point there for the biggest negative value. Now it's arbitrary how far up I go. I've chosen to go to the same distance as the existing displacement curve, but you could go to any one you want as long as you're um, consistent. So there we are, I'm putting on the points. And you can see the most positive and the most negative ones. And now for the hardest part of all. I've been drawing sine curves, cosine curves, etc. for 9 on 40 years. And I still find it really hard. I often start by just doing curves at the top, top points and bottom points like that. So let's see how I get on. Okay. You get the idea. Not easy. 
almost feel like you want to fast forward this bit. Make sure we go through the zero there. Ding. It's not bad at all. Okay, and I think I um, did four attempts at that one. Gave myself seven out of ten for the curve. Okay, so that's how you get the velocity graph. Here's the Excel version of it now. Notice that blue is the displacement, and the yellow or orange, every point along that is the gradient of the displacement curve. And you can see the maximums and minimums. And now we're going to go on and look at the acceleration. So this is really very similar to working out the velocity. You now have to take the gradient of the velocity graph at various points. In other words, the gradient of the yellow one. Little glitch with the pen there. So doing it in green this time. So I'm adding on the key points just so I can see where they are. The maximums, the zeros, and the minimums. Remember I'm talking about gradient here, not the value, the gradient. So we're looking at the tangent at those points of the yellow curve. That's a zero, the tangent is zero. So the gradient is zero. All these points, it's a straight horizontal line. Now the gradient at that point is steepest downhill, so it's maximum negative. Right. This point here is steepest going uphill, so it's maximum positive. Maximum negative again. Maximum positive because it's going up. And now, just like before, we pick an arbitrary height for an amplitude and then add on the points. So that's maximum negative. So it's this one's zero, so it crosses over the axis. Next up is maximum positive. So there it is. Again, the actual height of this is arbitrary. That one's a zero because it's flat. Now we've got maximum negative. Next point is flat, so it's zero. Ooh, I just missed when I drew that one. It needs to go ever so slightly to the right. And again, zero. Okay, and now you have the joy of watching me struggle to turn this into a, a curve. Now those of you that are smart and on the ball with your maths will know that this is a minus sine curve. In other words, it's the kind of reflection around the x-axis of the displacement. That's worth bearing in mind. Now what we're doing here, we're looking at displacement, velocity and acceleration for a simple harmonic oscillator. I was quite impressed with my effort there, drawing the green one, so I've given myself a nice little message. I just want to stress one point though. So here I've used uh, Excel with some actual values for T and omega and um, amplitude. And you can see that with real values, the actual amplitudes of the three waves, displacement, velocity, and acceleration, do come out very differently. So this is kind of a more real world example, but, but please bear in mind that the y-axis particularly is just arbitrary units. Nevertheless, you can see the scaling factor there. Thanks for watching.